welcome to the Fast Money Halftime Report. Getting to the heart of the action as it is happening. The market close to session highs right now with tech and commodities leading the charge higher. Where is the smart money going to work? Let's get to the word on the street right now. Our Fast Money crew today, the liquidator, Joe Terranova, Mike Coe of Cantor Fitzgerald and Options Action Trader, Katie Stockton from MKM Partners, and Eugene Profit from Profit Funds. Eugene, we're above 10000 again. Are we allowed to pull the rally caps out? I think if we get through the end of the day, you've gotten over the idea that you had a market crash on this day, so maybe you can come to the rally cap a little bit. All right, and Mike Co, uh, you know what's most notable about the intraday moves in this session is that we are seeing particularly the brokers moving higher. Goldman Sachs is up by almost a full percentage point, and that really has been the tell in today's session. When you take a look at Goldman Sachs versus the S&P 500, uh, does this give you an indication as to whether investors are, are feeling a little bit more comfortable with the levels we're at right now, willing to get in on names that have sold off recently? Yeah, no, I, I definitely think that people are demonstrating a, a pretty good degree of confidence. I mean, I don't think that what we saw at the tail end of last week was all that unhealthy. And the activity that we see in the options market kind of bears that out. I mean, if anything, there's only modestly protective types of activity going into earnings typically. That was true in some of the financials last week. It's true in some of the financials this week, some of the regionals like uh, Regions Financial and Key. So, you know, I, I think it does reflect sort of a, you know, a level of comfort that we're seeing with uh, earnings so far. Absolutely. And, and Katie, what are you noticing in terms of the charts for a name like a Goldman Sachs or J.P. Morgan, the ones that have been moving so strongly uh, all throughout uh, the recent run up since the March lows? And now they've gotten earnings out of the way, but we're still waiting for Morgan Stanley this week. Right. You know, the financial sector has really outperformed, obviously, since the March low was established. And those groups, uh, including technology as well, are overextended on a relative strength basis. So what I think you could see is as the market kind of digests its gains in here, that you see rotation out of the more, more um, high beta areas of the market and the, the areas of the market that have exhibited leadership like the financials into more defensive areas like the staples and telecom. Okay, so we'll look for that to switch over. Next trade here moving right now. Tech shares, Apple, in fact, close to session highs right now ahead of its earnings release after the bell. Texas Instruments up almost 3% ahead of its release. Two of the big reports that we'll be dissecting on the desk on Fast Money. And, and you know, for Apple, Eugene, you know, you got to wonder, this is a stock that's nearly doubled this year. Uh, it is beat on the EPS side every quarter for the past two years. It's beat on the revenue expectations every quarter but one over that same time period. What's the play here? Well, Melissa, I think that you'll see Apple beat again here today, but... Um I think you also have very high expectations here, and usually Apple is not overly optimistic about its projections forward. So even though I think you're going to see a big beat here, you might have an opportunity to enter this name at a little bit smaller valuation. But then after, I think you're going to see the stock go over $200 a share. So basically you're saying, Eugene, that the window of opportunity might be small to get in on this name. Uh, on this slight pullback that we're seeing. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, really, this is a company with no debt. Um, they have great products. And essentially, look at the market share um, in the MAC as kind of a barometer of how well they've done on um, this period. And as I said, I think that when the market you know, comes back fully, um, you're going to see the stock at a much higher valuation price. Right. And of course, we're looking behind the numbers, not just on the EPS and the revenues, although that's uh, what the you know, investors tend to focus on. Snow Leopard, Unit Shift, et cetera. Uh, Mike, uh, how is the options market setting up? You know, I think the options uh, market is basically telling us that we shouldn't expect anything too tremendous coming out. I don't think they're going to beat their implied move probably just close to 6%. But I think typically what you would expect to see is, you know, on a stock that's moved this much with something coming up like earnings, if the, if the options traders thought something profound was going to happen, they'd probably be a lot more protective. We're not seeing that put call ratio is marginally higher, not super heavy volume and implied volatilities. That is the relative price of options, not that steep in here. So I think the options markets are pretty much telling us again it's probably going to be much like everything else we've seen this earnings season so far and, and Katie one uh, Dow component that's certainly helping the session today shares of IBM it did have a, a weak session on Friday it's up now by about 1.1 percent here what do you see in the charts here for big blue Right, IBM gapped down about five percent last week in response to its earnings report so that suggests that you know the positive expectations were built in to some extent and that it is overextended on a short-term basis at least. So I think you could see some of the technology names this week that are reporting kind of do the same and would probably wait for that earnings catalyst to be out of the way. And just quickly before we leave the tech discussion, Eugene, I got to ask you about techs and that's the other report to after the bell today. Do you play in the chip names at all or are there other names that are more attractive to you at well, this point? Well, yeah, we do play in the chip space. We like Intel better than Tech Instruments here. I, I think that if um, Tech Instruments reports weak earnings, it's a stock specific um, story. But I think overall, 
your semiconductor space is going to continue to do extremely well. I just like a few other names a little bit better. Okay, let's move on to the next right here. Oil trading higher today off of its highs of 79 bucks a barrel. Oil services names outperforming the broader market. Conoco, Tesoro, Valero, all trading to the upside. Myco, this is space uh, that you follow. Are there any equity names that you see uh, that could be a buying opportunity today? Well, you know, you know, it's really interesting because obviously all those names are higher. Weatherford's a little bit lower right. based on the uh, earnings that came out. But the options activity we saw there says that options traders thought this was an opportunity. Jan 10, 19 puts, people were selling those, implied ball there a little bit lower. What they're basically saying is they're comfortable buying the stock at the $19 level. Usually, right after earnings, that's not the kind of activity you're gonna see when there's disappointing results. So basically, I think people are using this disappointment as a buying opportunity, and they're pretty bullish in this space. And in this space, let's head to our chart of the day. And Katie, you're watching uh, crude. You're watching some key resistance levels here. Right, last week. Oh. Last week, crude oil broke out above resistance at around 76.50 on the futures. And if that breakout is confirmed on a strong close this week or this Friday, it would suggest that the path is clear of resistance and that the next level we can focus on is in the mid $80 per barrel range. It had been consolidating for about four months. And that consolidation phase, even though it reflected a loss of momentum, it turns out that loss of momentum may have been constructive and that it had become overextended going into June. Okay, so a, a bot, just a bottom line in here, $84 is the next uh, potential stop for oil. Right. Okay. Time now for the Fast and Furious. We'll answer all your burning questions heading into the close today. We kick it off with Texas Instruments out after the bell today. Mike, do you buy? I would not. I think you probably get a better opportunity. You know, they get a lot from the mobile space, Nokia maybe in particular, so I think you'll get a better opportunity. Not so great on this one. KO, Coca-Cola reporting ahead of the bell tomorrow. Are you a buyer, Katie? It's right up near resistance, so I'd like to see that earnings catalyst out of the way on this one, too. And Boston Scientific also out after the bell today. Are you a buyer, Eugene? Well, no. St. Jude pre-announced on sort of a little bit of a weak um, ICD unit sales, and I think Boston Scientific um, has a lot of debt. I, I like Abbott Labs a lot better here. Okay, going to take a pause on the halftime report on tonight's Fast Money. We've got all the after hours action on Apple covered as the conference call kicks off at 5 p.m. sharp. Plus, we'll give you the best way to play the name tomorrow. Up next, an in-depth look at the war for the web. Who is better positioned to come up? Come out on top, but first we're halftime report right after this. We're back above 10,000, but the celebration.